open a pinata and we'll all get baseball bats and we'll all get blindfolded and we'll all run. There'll be a bell that's ringing in the pinata and whoever swings the thing and grabs the most money, they win. Okay, fine. Do it that way in your country. I don't give a damn. You know, but this is how much money needs to be in circulation to account for the whole thing and have a free for all, have a fight, or decide like civilized people on a just thing. I don't give a damn. I've been doing this for 42 years. If you want to be idiots, go ahead and be idiots. You know, but you know, the way to solve okay. this clean and simple is to distribute it by one process to everyone. And what's it going to do? It's going to take uh, the little old lady who's been living in the same ho- home for, you know, 65 years. You know, her mortgage is going to drop from, you know, $500 a month, which might be low nowadays, to $5 a month, you know. And, uh, you know, there's her prosperity, you know, right there. You know, uh, it, it's it's all in the numbers. Uh, there's... Uh, a way to do this simple and clean, um, which isn't going to itself be perfect, um, but it's the best that you can do given the circumstances. I mean, for crying out loud, you know how people are. We could argue for 20 years about whose share ought to be what of what you know, we need to restore to an incredibly deflated circulation converse to what Ron Paul is constantly telling us. You know, he's constantly screaming about in- inflation is causing all our problems, and he, of course, can't articulate how. Well, the truth of the matter is uh, that if the circulation is less than the value a remaining value of, of all re- representable prop, property, you have deflation. That means if you're living in a $250,000 house, there should be $250,000 in circulation. When you look around your neighborhood and you see everybody else is, 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 is existing in the same circumstances and everyone ought to have $250,000 in their pocket, you know, if things are distributed, you know, evenly around uh, the people that produce these things, you know, that's, that's how it would be. And what do you got? You got nothing. And you're paying everything you do have out of circulation on this multiplication of artificial indebtedness. And, uh, you know, even when you buy something at the store, how much of it is dedicated to servicing debt is, is phenomenal, you know. And so the question is, what do you want to do? Bicker about, you know, how we spread this around? Or, or do you want to make a, a quick, plain decision and say, let's go from here, you know. We benefit more by, you know, working, being productive, um, you know, going, uh, you know, going back uh, going back to work and, and uh, you know, reopening our shops and, and, and doing the things that we used to love to do and, and couldn't even afford to do anymore and, and, and we're doing in peril for 10 or 20 years because, you know, we were we were just living one step ahead of, of, of the, you know, the, the foreclosure experts, you know. Um, that's the question. I mean, do you want solution? You know, mathematically perfected economy is mathematically perfected economy. Exactly how we're going to transform it is not going to be a matter of, of perfection itself. It's going to be what's necessary, expedient, agreeable. You know, and if we can't agree on on what's necessary and expedient, then to hell with us. You know, I'm not here to argue about that. And that's not, you know, that's 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 just what I would do to save humanity. And if humanity said, well, wait, 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 I want I want a bigger share. (laughs) And everybody else jumps up. Oh, wait, I want a bigger share, too. (laughs) Well, you know, okay, fine. I sit down then. Go ahead. You know, Uh, we can't do things that way. We have to we have to grow up on a, a lot of fronts. And in truth, you know, mathematically perfected economy is just a, a small issue, you know, in today. But it is the most important by far because it's the only way that we're going to get all the other things done, too, until we get corrupt government out of the equation. 
uh, until we can hold government absolutely accountable, which was, which is what the whole aspects of the, the teeth of this mandate are about, uh, uh, which, uh, you know, are, are Jefferson's dream. You know, he, he meant to, to bind down government. Um, and uh, this mandate uh, holds government accountable like never before. Um, uh, it, it creates a new legal entity and a, a sovereign individual. Um, that itself will create a whole new uh, state of affairs. And, you know, I'm, I'm pleased to find that I'm not the inventor of such a thing, you know, um, thanks to, you know, Vincent contacting me from, from Ireland. Um, but uh, I, I can tell you that it's, it's, you know, sitting where I sit, uh, it's a, an inevitable conclusion that a person who needs to resolve all these issues or figure out how to resolve all these issues has to come to. Um, with their Sovereign rights as an individual are, are indispensable. And um, uh, the, the only thing that prevents uh, a wrong majority um, or even a wrong minority from prevailing over majority. And after all, I mean, here in the United States, I mean, how many people have faith in government? Um, you know, I'm, I was just informed a few days back that uh, people in Iceland have the, just voted to have the lowest uh, faith in government ever. Ten, less than ten percent, I think, in par, of, of faith in par, parliament, you know, and uh, yet uh, the teeth of this mandate are such that if I was in power right now, unless I was uh, um, inept as uh, some of these plagiarists are, so that I didn't realize that I was intervening on issues that uh, I had no business. Uh, poking my nose into, um, government uh, will exist in fear of the people at all times. There will be nothing that any person in a position of authority will dare do ever afterward, but in the most highly conscientious and accountable manner. They dare not subject it uh, to public assent uh, uh, or fail to do so rather because um, the, the penalties are extreme for every case of of pursuing any course of administration to our affairs which ultimately cannot or does not satisfy every will of the people and this this applies to myself in um, establishing uh, this idea of, of mathematically perfected economy in the mandate. Um, I leave it to the people um, to decide, for instance, um, the rates of depreciation they want to apply. Mathematically perfected economy is the principle that you have to uh, abide by to, to do it right. But... I, I say, oh, well, you know, you want to uh, to apply, you think that this, your perception is that this va value for this class of objects depreciates in a different kind of a manner. Um, fine, okay? That's exactly what you're supposed to do in mathematically perfected economy. You're supposed to say, hey, well, there's a, there's a defect in this, which is sufficient enough to raise. And that is that, well, when I buy a brand new car, that car can never be sold, but for a thousand dollars less for me driving it 15 feet. Therefore, the rate of depreciation has to drop thousand dollars in the first 15 feet. That's exactly how you need to describe your um, your concern and implement it as a. Uh, applicable means of depreciation under mathematically perfected economy. We could have millions of these things. I think that's personally that it's ridiculous because uh, I came up with a, uh, a method of determining uh, descaled uh, depreciation is what I call it, uh, which no one had any complaint 
about. And so after submitting that to a poll for a year or more, uh, I actually decided to make it the default method of determining depreciation in the mandate. Why? Not for it to prevail, but for you for it to prevail so that we were doing something and we could have mathematically perfected economy immediately until people get through all their bickering and decide they want to have 1,001 exactly different means methods of determining depreciation and applying that to uh, whatever other means they want to d- use to determine, you know, relative lifespan. And, you know, the sense of bickering about all that is, you know, practically senseless so i think it's i think it's humanity's uh, opportunity to grow up um because yeah. there's so many uh, there are so many of us that i believe are, you know are um uh, educated responsible um you know believe themselves sovereign believe themselves um moral um you know, and just, uh, it just you know, you get on with your fellow humans. You want to do for other humans. But Whereas my God, can you imagine don't. what it would be like if all of us driving to our our job, which was restored to us tomorrow morning, you know, and we go through say two weeks, everybody's back to work. Our mortgage is so paid in advance, we don't even have a house payment. We're passing each other on the road. And we're looking at each other differently than we ever did before. Because, by God, now we can prosper. Can you imagine that? I mean... I can imagine it, and I would very much like to see it in my lifetime, yes. Um, And I I see... Because I live in the country, and I know you do too, Mike, so, you know, your neighbours... you, you prosper in a slightly different way. You look at each other in a different way, the same as I look on my neighbours and, you know, and the townsfolk nearby... Um, but to go into a city, it's a completely different thing. So to see what you are suggesting in a city uh, would be the most amazing thing that you know we could ever think of as, well, as sure. humanity itself. Coffee shop, sitting in, standing in line at the at delicatessen, going to the restaurant. The restaurants are are full. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, every restaurant in this clo- town is closed. You know, you yeah. can't even buy a breakfast here. You know, they've been for sale for up to over 10 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and I can remember, you know, the uh, first time I had sushi in San Francisco many years ago. And I mean, geez, oh, man, the, the people were lined up in the street, out the door, <laughs> down the street. They had to wait hours to get a table. There were that many people eating. You go to these places now, and there's, there's nobody in there, you know. It's yeah, like, nobody can afford it anymore. Right. I mean, I was just telling Vincent a while ago, I mean, where I live is up in the mountains. It's a, you know, a little town, a couple hundred people in the summer, 100 people winter out here. It's over, you know, 4,000 foot elevation. we got a couple of feet of snow on the ground right now. But this is a, you know, a snowmobile playland. There's no way that the first snow, just even a couple years ago, there was no way that the first snow could fall and you wouldn't hear all over town outsiders bringing in their racing snowmobiles and driving up and down our streets and making a pain in the ass of themselves. But you heard constant revving snowmobiles and everything. We've had snow on the ground for a couple of weeks here, and I haven't heard the first snowmobile yet. This was impossible to happen just two years ago. Impossible to have the lack of snowmobiles that we have had, you know, this winter, in last winter, <laughs> but you know, it's 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 amazing if you keep track of it. I mean, there are more empty buildings, empty businesses in 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 town, the nearest you know towns to us than than ever before. I mean, I keep regular count on these things. But even in the last six months, they've gone up at a faster rate than ever before. In six months, it's noticeably worse by a substantial amount 
than the than the six months before. And we're talking a a pretty nice looking you know town and all you know. So um, it's up to yeah, us. I, I mean, we can we can yeah. we can go to the court and drop our pieces of paper and be too scared to appear ourselves.